Our diocesan prayer for vocations. O oh God, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Bless our Diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. Please join us singing the processional hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. mercy. You are eternal food that brings life. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You nourish those who hunger and thirst. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who console the sorrowful and who mercifully accept the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, Augustine, grant us through the intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret, regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle by Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the tem testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will praise your name forever, Lord. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. 
Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. They discourse of the power of your terrible deeds and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. I will praise your name forever, Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to uh, Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. It, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant, whom the master has put in charge of his household, to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so, Amen, I say to you, he will put me in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I didn't realize we were going to be joined by these young folks today. This is, this is wonderful. It's uh, good, to have, it's good to see you in here. Now, I can imagine that you're looking up here and you're saying, boy, is Deacon Clark ever old? And of course, I couldn't deny that. But let me tell you that it wasn't that long ago. It seems like just yesterday that I was a young person just like you. And it, time goes fast. It, 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 uh, it's amazing how fast it does go. It somehow, it seems like one day I just woke up and uh, I was old. Now, I tell you this because our gospel reading for today, our message is preparedness, preparedness. And uh, when we're young, we tend to think that we can live forever, that being old and thinking of retirement, thinking of dying, are so far in the future that we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to plan for that yet. And, and what you see is, is that before you know it, you're old just like I am, and you've not prepared properly for your retirement and for other things that you need to prepare for. So in life, there are many things that you do have to prepare for, and it seems like the further out they are in the distance, the least 
uh, effort we put into pre preparing for those. We tend to po procrastinate. We tend to push it off. We tend to kick that can down the road. And, 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 and what happens is, is that this sneaks up on us, okay? It sneaks up on us. Uh, so what we see is that young people and preparing for retirement, they don't prepare for retirement. They don't start putting and planning for that retirement when they're young, when they first start in their 20s. And before they know it, they're, uh, they're old and they're not ready for retirement. Um, and, and I guess looking at these young people here, um, you had to prepare, right? You had to prepare for school. And especially you had to prepare now that we have this pandemic, right? You had to wear these masks, you have to social distance. You have to prepare, okay, for going to school each day. So there is preparation involved in a lot of different things that we do. And in many ways, I would tell you that our faith is kind of like retirement. It's uh, not a retirement where we suffer and we're in a lot of pain uh, as we are here on earth, but it's a retirement where we are happy. We are with the Lord. We're at peace. And that's something that we, we all should strive for, is to seek that peace, that eternal retirement with our Father. And it's something that uh, you can't put off. Jesus tells us today that if you're not prepared, you need to prepare right now. Don't procrastinate. Don't push it off. Don't put, kick the can down the road, okay? You need to start preparation right now so that you're ready. Because as Jesus tells us in the gospel today, we don't know when the Lord is going to call us home, right? We don't know if we're going to be old. We may be very young when God calls us. And so we need to be prepared for that, all right? You need to think of those things and to, to make sure that you're, you're doing those things that your parents tell you. Doing those things like your prayers every day and thanking the Lord for what he's given you and for the family that you're in. But there is a preparedness that you need to do because Jesus tells us to stay awake, be ready, be prepared, for he will be coming and he will be uh, calling on us, right? So. Also, today is the memorial for uh, St. Monica. Does anybody know who St. Monica is out here? No? Well, Father spoke about it quite extensively not too long back, and I hadn't really thought about t saying too much about her, but St. Monica was St. Augustine's mother. And uh, St. Augustine was one, is one of the great saints of the church. He's one of the fathers of our church, okay? And his teachings are renowned and uh, and all Christians seem to refer to St. Saint, uh, Saint Augustine, okay? And so she was known because, for her prayer, okay? So she was persistent in her prayer as she prayed for St. Augustine because he was, as a young person, he was not preparing for his old age. He was not repair, preparing to meet God, all right? And so... She prayed that he would be converted. And sure enough, whenever he did convert, whenever he was baptized, her prayers were answered. And shortly after that, she felt like she had done what God had called her to do, and God called her home. She was prepared. She was prepared to meet God. So that's the message today. Think and reflect on your preparedness to meet God. Are you ready right now, if he called you home, to meet God? Think on that. Let us stand and bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord our God.
For the Church, may Christ keep watch over her always and make her holy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with leadership, may God give them the grace to see and to be thankful for the gifts of those under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel far from God, may he remove every obstacle to their sense of security in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit foster in us a constant desire to follow his promptings in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Robert Doro, Duraf, uh, for whom this Mass is offered, may they soon enter into the peace of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, hear the prayer spoken before you this day. And those we hold in the silence of our hearts, answer them in your time. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all souls. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate St. Monica, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Monica and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our bishop-elect, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those at home and cannot receive communion at this time, we will pray our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I choose to be one with you, Jesus. I want your heart next to my heart, your soul next to my soul your body inside my body, and your blood running through my veins. I want your infinite divinity to fill me completely. Jesus, I want to be one with you in my thoughts, feelings, and desires, in what I say and do and what I do not do because of you. I embrace you now inside of me. Jesus, I love you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, almighty God, on this feast day of St. Monica, that we may be ever fervent with, with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Before we conclude, we want to certainly keep all of those affected by the hurricane in Louisiana and Texas and, and in the path of them in our prayers. So we keep all of those in Texas and Louisiana who are affected by this recent hurricane that is going through right now. We keep them in our prayers today and in the days to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Have a blessed day.